The Irish language Gwaelga, also sometimes referred to as Gaelic or the Irish Gaelic language, is a Goidelic language Gaelic of the Indo-European language family originating in Ireland and historically spoken by the Irish people. Irish is spoken as a first language by areas in the country such as Donegal, Monaghan, Meath, Galway, Mayo and Kerry as well as some other areas and as a second language by a larger group of non-native speakers across the country. Irish has been the predominant language of the Irish people for most of their recorded history, and they brought it with them to other regions, notably Scotland and the Isle of Man, where Middle Irish gave rise to Scottish Gaelic and Manx respectively. It has the oldest vernacular literature in Western Europe. Irish has constitutional status as the national and first official language of the Republic of Ireland and is an officially recognised minority language in Northern Ireland. It is also among the official languages of the European Union. The public body Foras na Gaelga is responsible for the promotion of the language throughout the island of Ireland. Topic: <laughs> Names. In Ancaidin Oifidual, the official written standard, the name of the language is Gaelga, Irish pronunciation EL. Before the spelling reform of 1948, this form was spelled Gadhiga, originally this was the genitive of Gadhilg, the form used in Classical Irish. Older spellings of this include Gawadhilg in Classical Irish and Goidelk in Old Irish. The modern spelling results from the deletion of the silent th in the middle of Gadhiga, whereas Goidelic, used to refer to the language family including Irish, is derived from the Old Irish term. Other forms of the name found in the various modern Irish dialects in addition to South Connick Gwelga above include Gadhilic, Gwelic, Gaelic ELC or Gadlag EL in Ulster Irish and Northern Connick Irish and Gadhailain, Jalin, Gaelain EL, EL, N in Munster Irish. In Europe and in Asia the language is usually referred to as Irish, with Gaelic or Irish Gaelic used in some instances elsewhere. The term Irish Gaelic is often used when English speakers discuss the relationship between the three Goidelic languages Irish, Scottish Gaelic and Manx. History Written Irish is first attested in Oam inscriptions from the 4th century AD, a stage of the language known as Primitive Irish. These writings have been found throughout Ireland and the west coast of Great Britain. Primitive Irish transitioned into Old Irish through the 5th century. Old Irish, dating from the 6th century, used the Latin alphabet and is attested primarily in marginalia to Latin manuscripts. During this time, the Irish language absorbed some Latin words, some via Old Welsh, including ecclesiastical terms. Examples are Eastbag bishop from Episcopus and Donic Sunday from Dominica. By the 10th century, Old Irish had evolved into Middle Irish, which was spoken throughout Ireland and in Scotland and the Isle of Man. It is the language of a large corpus of literature, including the Ulster Cycle. From the 12th century, Middle Irish began to evolve into Modern Irish in Ireland, into Scottish Gaelic in Scotland, and into the Manx language in the Isle of Man. Early Modern Irish, dating from the 13th century, was the basis of the literary language of both Ireland and Gaelic-speaking Scotland. Modern Irish, as attested in the work of such writers as Geoffrey Keating, may be said to date from the 17th century, and was the medium of popular literature from that time on. From the 18th century on, the language lost ground in the east of the country. The reasons behind this shift were complex but came down to a number of factors. Discouragement of its use by Anglo-British administrations. The Catholic Church supporting the use of English over Irish. The spread of bilingualism from the 1750s, resulting in language shift, it was a change characterized by diglossia two languages being used by the same community in different social and economic situations and transitional bilingualism monoglot Irish-speaking grandparents with bilingual children and monoglot English-speaking grandchildren. By the mid-18th century, English was becoming a language of the Catholic middle class, the Catholic Church and public intellectuals, especially in the east of the country. Increasingly, as the value of English became apparent, the prohibition on Irish in schools had the sanction of parents. Once it became apparent that immigration to the United States and Canada was likely for a large portion of the population, the importance of learning English became relevant. This allowed the new immigrants to get jobs in areas other than farming. 
It has been estimated that, due to the immigration to the United States because of the famine, anywhere from a quarter to a third of the immigrants were Irish speakers. Irish was not marginal to Ireland's modernization in the 19th century, as often assumed. In the first half of the century there were still around three million people for whom Irish was the primary language, and their numbers alone made them a cultural and social force. Irish speakers often insisted on using the language in law courts even when they knew English, and Irish was also common in commercial transactions. The language was heavily implicated in the devotional revolution, which marked the standardization of Catholic religious practice and was also widely used in a political context. Down to the time of the Great Famine and even afterwards, the language was in use by all classes, Irish being an urban as well as a rural language. This linguistic dynamism was reflected in the efforts of certain public intellectuals to counter the decline of the language. At the end of the 19th century, they launched the Gaelic Revival in an attempt to encourage the learning and use of Irish, although few adult learners mastered the language. The vehicle of the revival was the Gaelic League and particular emphasis was placed on the folk tradition, which in Irish is particularly rich. Efforts were also made to develop journalism and a modern literature. Although it has been noted that the Catholic Church played a role in the decline of the Irish language before the Gaelic revival, the Protestant Church of Ireland also made only minor efforts to encourage use of Irish in a religious context. An Irish translation of the Old Testament by Leinsterman Murchartach o Changa, commissioned by Bishop Bedell, was published after 1685 along with a translation of the New Testament. Otherwise, Anglicization was seen as synonymous with civilizing of the native Irish. Currently, modern-day Irish speakers in the Church are pushing for language revival. Topic. Current status Topic. Republic of Ireland Irish is recognised by the Constitution of Ireland as the national and first official language of the Republic of Ireland, English is the other official language. Despite this, almost all government debates and business are conducted in English. In 1938, the founder of Conra na Gaelga Gaelic League, Douglas Hyde, was inaugurated as the first President of Ireland. The record of his delivering his inaugural declaration of office in Roscommon Irish is one of only a few recordings of that dialect. From the foundation of the Irish Free State in 1922 see also History of the Republic of Ireland, a degree of proficiency in Irish was required of all those newly appointed to the civil service of the Republic of Ireland, including postal workers, tax collectors, agricultural inspectors, Garda Shashana, etc. By law if a Garda was stopped and addressed in Irish he had to respond in Irish as well. Proficiency in just one official language for entrance to the public service was introduced in 1974, in part through the actions of protest organisations like the Language Freedom Movement. Although the Irish requirement was also dropped for wider public service jobs, Irish remains a required subject of study in all schools within the Republic which receive public money see also Education in the Republic of Ireland. Those wishing to teach in primary schools in the state must also pass a compulsory examination called Scrudu Kaleoshta Sa Gaelga. The need for a pass in leaving certificate Irish or English for entry to the Garda Shashana police was introduced in September 2005, and recruits are given lessons in the language during their two years of training. The most important official documents of the Irish government must be published in both Irish and English or Irish alone in accordance with the Official Languages Act 2003, enforced by an Coimissionaire Tianga, the Irish language ombudsman. The National University of Ireland requires all students wishing to embark on a degree course in the Newey Federal System to pass the subject of Irish in the Leaving Certificate or GCE, GCSE examinations. Exemptions are made from this requirement for students born outside of the Republic of Ireland, those who were born in the Republic but completed primary education outside it, and students diagnosed with dyslexia. Nui Galway is required to appoint people who are competent in the Irish language, as long as they are also competent in all other aspects of the vacancy to which they are appointed. This requirement is laid down by the University College Galway Act, 1929, Section 3. The university faced controversy, however, in 2016 when it was announced that the next president of the university would not have any Irish. Misnich staged a number of protests against this decision. It was announced in September 2017 that Kieran O. Hogartai, a fluent Irish speaker, will be NUIG's 13th president. 
For a number of years there has been vigorous debate in political, academic and other circles about the failure of most students in mainstream English medium schools to achieve competence in the language, even after 14 years. The concomitant decline in the number of traditional native speakers has also been a cause of great concern. In 2007, filmmaker Manchan Megan found few speakers and some incredulity while speaking only Irish in Dublin. He was unable to accomplish some everyday tasks, as portrayed in his documentary No Bayarla. There is, however, a growing body of Irish speakers in urban areas, most coming through the Gaelskoiliana, national schools, and a small number of secondary schools, in which Irish is the sole language of instruction. These Irish medium schools send a much higher proportion of pupils onto third level education than do mainstream schools, and it seems increasingly likely that, within a generation, habitual users of Irish will typically be members of an urban, middle class, and highly educated minority. Parliamentary legislation is supposed to be available in both Irish and English but is frequently only available in English. This is notwithstanding that Article 25. 4 of the Constitution of Ireland requires that an official translation of any law in one official language be provided immediately in the other official language if not already passed in both official languages in november 2016 it was reported that many people worldwide were learning irish through the duolingo app irish president michael higgins officially honored several volunteer translators for developing the irish edition and said the push for irish language rights remains an unfinished project in the 2016 census, 10.5% of respondents stated that they spoke Irish, either daily or weekly. Gaeltacht There are rural areas of Ireland where Irish is still spoken daily to some extent as a first language. These regions are known individually and collectively as the Gaeltacht, or in the plural as Gaeltachtai. While the Gaeltacht's fluent Irish speakers, whose numbers have been estimated at 20 or 30,000, are a minority of the total number of fluent Irish speakers, they represent a higher concentration of Irish speakers than other parts of the country and it is only in Gaeltacht areas that Irish continues, to some extent, to be spoken as a community vernacular. According to data compiled by the Department of Community, Equality and Gaeltacht Affairs, only one quarter of households in officially Gaeltacht areas are fluent in Irish. The author of a detailed analysis of the survey, Donha O'Halath of the Galway Mayo Institute of Technology, described the Irish language policy followed by Irish governments as a complete and absolute disaster. The Irish Times, referring to his analysis published in the Irish language newspaper Foynes, quoted him as follows. It is an absolute indictment of successive Irish governments that at the foundation of the Irish state there were 250,000 fluent Irish speakers living in Irish-speaking or semi-Irish-speaking areas, but the number now is between 20,000 and 30,000. In the 1920s, when the Irish Free State was founded, Irish was still a vernacular in some western coastal areas. In the 1930s, areas where more than 25% of the population spoke Irish were classified as Gaeltacht. Today, the strongest Gaeltacht areas, numerically and socially, are those of South Connemara, the west of the Dingle Peninsula and northwest Donegal, where many residents still use Irish as their primary language. These areas are often referred to as the Fior Gaeltacht, true Gaeltacht a term originally officially applied to areas where over 50% of the population spoke Irish. There are larger Gaeltacht regions in County Galway including Connemara, Connemara the Aran Islands Oily and Aran, Cararo and Chedru Rua and Spital and Spidial, on the west coast of County Donegal Nall, and on the Dingle Corca Dubni, and Avera Peninsulas Uibh Rathach, in County Kerry Smaller ones also exist in counties Mayo Conte Ma Eo, Meath Conte Na Me, Waterford and Rin, Conte Fort Laerge, and Cork Conte Chorsai. Guidor Gath Dobhair, County Donegal, is the largest Gaeltacht parish in Ireland. Irish language summer colleges in the Gaeltacht are attended by tens of thousands of teenagers annually. Students live with Gaeltacht families, attend classes, participate in sports, go to Sellithe and are obliged to speak Irish. All aspects of Irish culture and tradition are encouraged. Topic: Northern Ireland. Before the partition of Ireland in 1921, Irish was recognized as a school subject and as Celtic 
in some third-level institutions. Between 1921 and 1972, Northern Ireland had devolved government. During those years the political party holding power in the Stormont Parliament, the Ulster Unionist Party UUP, was hostile to the language. The context of this hostility was the use of the language by nationalists. In broadcasting, there was an exclusion on the reporting of minority cultural issues, and Irish was excluded from radio and television for almost the first 50 years of the previous devolved government. The language received a degree of formal recognition in Northern Ireland from the United Kingdom, under the 1998 Good Friday Agreement, and then, in 2003, by the British government's ratification in respect of the language of the European Charter for Regional or Minority Languages. In the 2006 St Andrews Agreement the British government promised to enact an Irish Language Act to promote the language but as of 2014 it has yet to do so. The Irish language has often been used as a bargaining chip during government formation in Northern Ireland, prompting protests from organisations and groups such as Andream Dirg. There is currently an ongoing debate in relation to the status of the language in the form of an Irish Language Act. Andream Dirg have launched a campaign in favour of such an act called Oct na Gwelga Anois, Irish Language Act Now. Topic. European Parliament. Irish became an official language of the EU on 1 January 2007, meaning that MEPs with Irish fluency can now speak the language in the European Parliament and at committees, although in the case of the latter they have to give prior notice to a simultaneous interpreter in order to ensure that what they say can be interpreted into other languages. While an official language of the European Union, only co-decision regulations must be available in Irish for the moment, due to a renewable five-year derogation on what has to be translated, requested by the Irish government when negotiating the language's new official status. Any expansion in the range of documents to be translated will depend on the results of the first five-year review and on whether the Irish authorities decide to seek an extension. The Irish government has committed itself to train the necessary number of translators and interpreters and to bear the related costs. Derogation is expected to end completely by 2022. Before Irish became an official language, it was afforded the status of treaty language and only the highest level documents of the EU were made available in Irish. Topic: Outside Ireland The Irish language was carried abroad in the modern period by a vast diaspora, chiefly to Britain and North America, but also to Australia, New Zealand and Argentina. The first large movements began in the 17th century, largely as a result of the Cromwellian conquest of Ireland, which saw many Irish sent to the West Indies. Irish emigration to the United States was well established by the 18th century, and was reinforced in the 1840s by thousands fleeing from the famine. This flight also affected Britain. Up until that time most emigrants spoke Irish as their first language, though English was establishing itself as the primary language. Irish speakers had first arrived in Australia in the late 18th century as convicts and soldiers, and many Irish-speaking settlers followed, particularly in the 1860s. New Zealand also received some of this influx. Argentina was the only non-English speaking country to receive large numbers of Irish emigrants, and there were few Irish speakers among them. Relatively few of the emigrants were literate in Irish, but manuscripts in the language were brought to both Australia and the United States, and it was in the United States that the first newspaper to make significant use of Irish was established, and Godhall. In Australia, too, the language found its way into print. The Gaelic Revival, which started in Ireland in the 1890s, found a response abroad, with branches of Conra na Gaelga being established in all the countries to which Irish speakers had emigrated. The decline of Irish in Ireland and a slowing of emigration helped to ensure a decline in the language abroad, along with natural attrition in the host countries. Despite this, small groups of enthusiasts continued to learn and cultivate Irish in diaspora countries and elsewhere, a trend which strengthened in the second half of the 20th century. Today the language is taught at tertiary level in North America, Australia and Europe, and Irish speakers outside Ireland contribute to journalism and literature in the language. 
There are significant Irish speaking networks in the United States and Canada. Figures released for the period 2006 to 2008 show that 22,279 Americans claim to speak Irish at home. The Irish language is also one of the languages of the Celtic League, a non-governmental organization that promotes self-determination and Celtic identity and culture in Ireland, Scotland, Wales, Brittany, Cornwall, and the Isle of Man, known as the Celtic Nations. It places particular emphasis on the indigenous Celtic languages. It is recognized by the United Nations as a non-governmental organization with roster status and is part of the UN's Economic and Social Council. The organization has branches in all the Celtic nations and in Patagonia, Argentina, New York City, US, and London, UK. Irish was spoken as a community language until the early 20th century on the island of Newfoundland, in a form known as Newfoundland Irish. Use The following 2016 census data shows, the total number of people who answered yes to being able to speak Irish in April 2016 was 1,761,420, a slight decrease on the 2011 figure of 1,774,437. This represents 39.8% of respondents compared with 41.4 in 2011. Of the 73,803 daily Irish speakers outside the education system, 20,586 lived in Gaeltacht areas. <laughs> daily Irish speakers in Gaeltacht area, 2011-2016 Topic. Dialects Irish is represented by several traditional dialects and by various varieties of «urban» Irish. The latter have acquired lives of their own and a growing number of native speakers. Differences between the dialects make themselves felt in stress, intonation, vocabulary and structural features. Roughly speaking, the three major dialect areas which survive coincide roughly with the provinces of Munster Connacht and Ulster Records of some dialects of Leinster were made by the Irish Folklore Commission and others. Newfoundland, in eastern Canada, had a form of Irish derived from the Munster Irish of the later 18th century see Newfoundland Irish. Munster. Munster Irish is the dialect spoken in the Gaeltacht areas of the three counties Cork Kerry Waterford The Gaeltacht areas of Cork can be found in Cape Clear Island and Muscary those of Kerry Lie in Corka Dubny and Avera Peninsula, and those of Waterford in Ring and, Rin and Old Parish and Sean Fobel, both of which together form Gaeltacht na and Dyes. Of the three counties, the Irish spoken in Cork and Kerry are quite similar while that of Waterford is more distinct. Some typical features of Munster Irish are the use of endings to show person on verbs in parallel with a pronominal subject system, thus, I must, is in Munster Caithfeed as well as Caithfeme, while other dialects prefer Caithfeme, may means, I, I was and you were, is Bios Agus Bs as well as B May Agus B2 in Munster, but more commonly B May Agus B2 in other dialects. Note that these are strong tendencies, and the personal forms bios etc. are used in the west and north, particularly when the words are last in the clause. Use of independent, dependent forms of verbs that are not included in the standard. For example, I see, in Munster is chim, which is the independent form. Northern Irish also uses a similar form, chim, whereas, I do not see, is ni thasem, thachem being the dependent form, which is used after particles such as ni, not. Chim is replaced by Fachem in the standard. Similarly, the traditional form preserved in Munster Biram I give, ni thugayam is tugayam, ni thugayam in the standard, gaibim I get, ni bhfagam is fagam, ni bhfagam. When before nn, m, rr, road, ll and so on, in monosyllabic words and in the stressed syllable of multisyllabic words where the syllable is followed by a consonant, some short vowels are lengthened while others are diphthongized, thus cian con, head, cam, come. Crooked, gear, ah, ah, short, ord, o road, sledgehammer, gall, yule, 
Foreigner, non gale. Yantas, UN. A wonder, a marvel. Kumpanak, cum PNX. Companion, mate, etc. A copular construction involving a, a it is frequently used. Thus, I am an Irish person can be said as Aaronic May and Aaronic is A May in Munster. There is a subtle difference in meaning, however, the first choice being a simple statement of fact, while the second brings emphasis onto the word Aaronic. In effect, the construction is a type of fronting. Both masculine and feminine words are subject to lenition after in san, sa, san, in the, den, of the, and don, to, for the, sa siopa, in the shop, compared to the standard sa siopa, the standard lenites only feminine nouns in the dative in these cases. Eclipsis of f after sa, sa berm, in the farm, instead of san firm. Eclipsis of T and D after preposition plus singular article, with all prepositions except after in son, den and don, are in D tie. On the house. Agon and doras. At the door. Stress falls in general found on the second syllable of a word when the first syllable contains a short vowel, and the second syllable contains a long vowel, diphthong, or is e ak, e.g. Bjorn, pin, as opposed to Bjorn in connect and Ulster. Topic. Connacht Historically, Connacht Irish represents the westernmost remnant of a dialect area which once stretched from east to west across the centre of Ireland. The strongest dialect of Connacht Irish is to be found in Connemara and the Aran Islands. Much closer to the larger Connacht Gaeltacht is the dialect spoken in the smaller region on the border between Galway and Mayo there are a number of differences between the popular South Connemara form of Irish, the mid connacht Joyce country form on the border between Mayo and Galway and the Achill and Aris forms in the north of the province. Features in connacht Irish differing from the official standard include a preference for verbal nouns ending in Aiken, e.g. Lagachan instead of Lagu. Weakening. The non-standard pronunciation of the Gaeltacht qua farage area with lengthened vowels and heavily reduced endings gives it a distinct sound. Distinguishing features of Connacht and Ulster dialect include the pronunciation of word final broad bh and mh as w, rather than as v in Munster. For example, Slyab mountain is pronounced lu in Connacht and Ulster as opposed to li beta in the south. In addition Connacht and Ulster speakers tend to include the we pronoun rather than use the standard compound form used in Munster, e.g. b mood is used for we were instead of bmr. As in Munster Irish, some short vowels are lengthened and others diphthongized before nn, m, r, r, road, ll, in monosyllabic words and in the stressed syllable of multisyllabic words where the syllable is followed by a consonant. This can be seen in cian, c, n, head, cam, k, m, crooked, gear, g, r, short, ord, oured, sledgehammer, gall, g, l, foreigner, non gale, yantas, i, n, a wonder, a marvel, etc. The form aibh, when occurring at the end of words like agabe, tends to be pronounced as an e sound. In South Connemara, for example, there is a tendency to substitute a b sound at the end of words ending in bh, beta, such as sibh, libh, and doib, something not found in the rest of Connacht. These words would be pronounced respectively as shiv, live, and dofa. In the other areas, this placing of the b sound is also present at the end of words ending in vowels, such as acu pronounced as acube, and leo pronounced as leohab. There is also a tendency to omit the g sound in words such as agam, agate, and again, a characteristic also of other conic dialects. All these pronunciations are distinctively regional. The pronunciation prevalent in the Joyce country the area around Loch Corrib and Loch Mask is quite similar to that of South Connemara, with a similar approach to the words agam, agate and again and a similar approach to pronunciation of vowels and consonants. But there are noticeable differences in vocabulary, with certain words such as doili difficult and foskelt being preferred to the more usual decare and oskayut. Another interesting aspect of this sub-dialect is that almost all vowels at the end of words tend to be pronounced as i, iol, other, kosa, feet, and deonta, done, tend to be pronounced as ili, kose, and deontai respectively. 
The northern Mayo dialect of Eris and Achil is in grammar and morphology essentially a conic dialect, but shows some similarities to Ulster Irish due to large-scale immigration of dispossessed people following the plantation of Ulster. For example, words ending mh and bh have a much softer sound, with a tendency to terminate words such as leo and doib with f, giving leofa and dofa respectively. In addition to a vocabulary typical of other area of connect, one also finds Ulster words like amhar meaning to look, and pronounced onk, ninich painful or sore, druid close, motai here, doilai difficult, er new, and tigla to be able to, i.e. a form similar to fighter. Irish President Douglas Hyde was possibly one of the last speakers of the Roscommon dialect of Irish. <inaudible> Ulster Ulster Irish is the dialect spoken in the Gaeltacht regions of Donegal. These regions contain all of Ulster's communities where Irish has been spoken in an unbroken line back to when the language was the dominant language of Ireland. The Irish speaking communities in other parts of Ulster are a result of language revival, English speaking families deciding to learn Irish. Linguistically, the most important of the Ulster dialects today is that which is spoken, with slight differences, in both Guidor Gath <laughs> Topic. Inlet of streaming water and the Rosses Narosa. Natives of Guidor include singers Enya Aethna and Moya Brennan and their siblings in Clannad Clan is Dobar. Family from the Dobar a section of Guidor na Kassedai, and Mered ni Awanai from another local band Alton. Natives of the Rosses include the literary brothers Seamus O. Griana and Siosam Mac Griana, locally known as Jimmy Feelimi and Joe Feelimi. Ulster Irish sounds quite different to the other two main dialects. It shares several features with southern dialects of Scottish Gaelic and Manx, as well as having lots of characteristic words and shades of meanings. However, since the demise of those Irish dialects spoken natively in what is today Northern Ireland, it is probably an exaggeration to see present-day Ulster Irish as an intermediary form between Scottish Gaelic and the Southern and Western dialects of Irish. Northern Scottish Gaelic has many non-Ulster features in common with Munster Irish. One noticeable trait of Ulster Irish, Manx Gaelic and Scots Gaelic is the use of the negative particle cha n in place of the Munster and conic ni. Though Southern Donegal Irish tends to use ni more than cha n, cha n has almost ousted ni in northernmost dialects, e.g. Rosgal and Tory Island, though even in these areas nil is not is more common than chan fuil or cha bh fool. Another noticeable trait is the pronunciation of the first person singular verb ending im as am, also common to man in Scotland. Munster, connacht siulame. I walk. Ulster siulam. Topic. Leinster Down to the early 19th century and even later, Irish was spoken in all twelve counties of Leinster. The evidence furnished by place names, literary sources and recorded speech indicates that there were three dialects spoken in Leinster. The main dialect was represented by a broad central belt stretching from West Connacht eastwards to the Liffey Estuary and southwards to Wexford, though with many local variations. Two smaller dialects were represented by the Ulster speech of counties Meath and Louth, which extended as far south as the Boyne Valley, and a Munster dialect found in Kilkenny and South Louth. The main dialect had characteristics which survive today only in the Irish of Connacht. It typically placed the stress on the first syllable of a word, and showed a preference found in place names for the pronunciation CR where the standard spelling is CN. The word CNOC would therefore be pronounced croc. Examples are the place names Crooksling in County Dublin and Crookeen in Carlow. East Leinster showed the same diphthongization or vowel lengthening as in Munster and Connacht Irish in words like pole hole, sill monastery, coil wood, cian head, cam crooked, and dream crowd. A feature of the dialect was the pronunciation of the vowel au, which generally became a in East Leinster as in Munster, and i in the West as in Connacht. Early evidence regarding colloquial Irish in East Leinster is found in the first book of the Introduction of Knowledge 1547, by the English physician and traveller Andrew Board. The illustrative phrases he uses include the following with regularised Irish spelling in brackets The Pale 
The Pale and fail was an area around late medieval Dublin under the control of the English government. By the late 15th century it consisted of an area along the coast from Dalkey, south of Dublin, to the garrison town of Dundalk, with an inland boundary encompassing Nas and Lakeslip in the earldom of Kildare and Trim and Kells in County Meath to the north. In this area of Angleish Tunge, English had never actually been a dominant language, and was moreover a relatively late comer. The first colonizers were Normans who spoke Norman French, and before these Norse. The Irish language had always been the language of the bulk of the population. An English official remarked of the Pale in 1515 that, "...all the common people of the said half-counties that obeyeth the king's laws, for the most part be of Irish birth, of Irish habit and of Irish language." With the strengthening of English cultural and political control, language change began to occur, but this did not become clearly evident until the 18th century. Even then, in the decennial period 1771–81, the percentage of Irish speakers in Meath was at least 41%. By 1851 this had fallen to less than 3%. <laughs> General decline English expanded strongly in Leinster in the 18th century, but Irish speakers were still numerous. In the decennial period 1771–81 certain counties had estimated percentages of Irish speakers as follows though the estimates are likely to be too low. Kilkenny 57% Louth 57% Longford 22% Westmeath 17% The language saw its most rapid initial decline in Louth, Wexford, Wicklow, County Dublin and perhaps Kildare. The proportion of Irish-speaking children in Leinster went down as follows, 17% in the 1700s, 11% in the 1800s, 3% in the 1830s and virtually none in the 1860s. The Irish census of 1851 showed that there were still a number of older speakers in County Dublin. Sound recordings were made between 1928 and 1931 of some of the last speakers in Omeath, County Louth now available in digital form. The last known traditional native speaker in Omeath, and in Leinster as a whole, was Annie O'Hanlon who died in 1960. <inaudible> Urban aspect Irish was spoken as a community language in Irish towns and cities down to the 19th century. In the 16th and 17th centuries it was widespread even in Dublin and the Pale, the Irish of Dublin, situated as it was between the East Ulster dialect of Meath and Louth to the north and the Leinster Connacht dialect further south, may have reflected the characteristics of both in phonology and grammar. In County Dublin itself the general rule was to place the stress on the initial vowel of words. With time it appears that the forms of the dative case took over the other case endings in the plural a tendency found to a lesser extent in other dialects. In a letter written in Dublin in 1691 we find such examples as the following, Ganothweeb accusative case, the standard form being Ganothai, Teorthweeb accusative case, the standard form being Teortha and Leithshialib genitive case, the standard form being Leithshialta. English authorities of the Cromwellian period, aware that Irish was widely spoken in Dublin, arranged for its official use. In 1655 several local dignitaries were ordered to oversee a lecture in Irish to be given in Dublin. In March 1656 a converted Catholic priest, Seamus Corsi, was appointed to preach in Irish at Bride's Parish every Sunday, and was also ordered to preach at Drogheda and Athai. In 1657 the English colonists in Dublin presented a petition to the Municipal Council complaining that in Dublin itself, there is Irish commonly and usually spoken. There is contemporary evidence of the use of Irish in other urban areas at the time. In 1657 it was found necessary to have an oath of abjuration rejecting the authority of the Pope read in Irish in Cork so that people could understand it. Irish was sufficiently strong in early 18th century Dublin to be the language of a coterie of poets and scribes led by Sean and Tadhg O. Nechton, both poets of note. Scribal activity in Irish persisted in Dublin right through the 18th century. An outstanding example was Muris O. Gormain Maurice Gorman, a prolific producer of manuscripts who advertised his services in English in Faulkner's Dublin Journal, in other urban centres the descendants of medieval Anglo-Norman settlers, the so-called Old English, were Irish-speaking or bilingual by the 16th century. The English administrator and traveller Fines Morrison, writing in the last years of the 16th century, said that 
the English Irish and the very citizens excepting those of Dublin where the Lord Deputy resides though they could speak English as well as we, yet commonly speak Irish among themselves, and were hardly induced by our familiar conversation to speak English with us." The demise of native cultural institutions in the 17th century saw the social prestige of Irish diminish, and the gradual Anglicization of the middle classes followed. The census of 1851 showed that the towns and cities of Munster still had significant Irish speaking populations. In 1819, James McQuidge, a veteran Methodist lay preacher in Irish, wrote, In some of the largest southern towns, Cork, Kinsale and even the Protestant town of Bandon, provisions are sold in the markets, and cried in the streets, in Irish." Irish speakers constituted over 40% of the population of Cork even in 1851. The 19th century saw a reduction in the number of Dublin's Irish speakers, in keeping with the trend elsewhere. This continued until the end of the century, when the Gaelic revival saw the creation of a strong Irish-speaking network, typically united by various branches of the Conra na Gaeilge, and accompanied by renewed literary activity. By the 1930s Dublin had a lively literary life in Irish. Urban Irish has been the beneficiary, over the last few decades, of a rapidly expanding independent school system, known generally as Gaelscoiliana. These schools teach entirely through Irish, and there are over 30 in Dublin alone. It is likely that the number of urban native speakers i.e. people who were born into Irish-speaking households and educated through Irish is on the increase. It has been suggested that Ireland's towns and cities are acquiring a critical mass of Irish speakers, reflected in the expansion of Irish language media. Colloquial urban Irish is changing in unforeseen ways, with attention being drawn to the rapid loss of consonantal mutations which are intrinsic to the language. It is presently uncertain whether the urban Irish of non-native speakers will become a dialect in its own right or grow further apart from native Gaeltacht Irish and become a creole i.e. a new language. And kiting oifigual And kiting oifigual the official standard, often shortened to Enkiteen, is the standard for the spelling and grammar of written Irish, developed and used by the Irish government. Its rules are followed by most schools in Ireland, though schools in and near Irish-speaking regions also use the local dialect. It was published by the Translation Department of Dale Éireann in 1953 and updated in 2012 and 2017. There is no official standard for pronouncing the Irish language. Certain dictionaries, such as Folklore Polka, provide a single pronunciation which is followed by most schools in regions which do not have a native dialect. The differences between dialects are considerable, and have led to recurrent difficulties in defining standard Irish. In recent decades contacts between speakers of different dialects have become more frequent and the differences between the dialects are less noticeable. Topic. Phonology. In pronunciation, Irish most closely resembles its nearest relatives, Scottish Gaelic and Manx. One notable feature is that consonants except h come in pairs, one broad, velarized, pronounced with the back of the tongue pulled back towards the soft palate and one slender, palatalized, pronounced with the middle of the tongue pushed up towards the hard palate. While broad slender pairs are not unique to Irish being found, for example, in Russian, in Irish they have a grammatical function. Diphthongs, I, U, I, U. Topic. Syntax and morphology Irish is a fusional, VSO, nominative accusative language. Irish is neither verb nor satellite framed, and makes liberal use of deictic verbs. Nouns decline for three numbers, singular, dual, plural, two genders, masculine, feminine, and four cases, ainich nominative and accusative, germich vocative, genidich genitive, and tabarthach prepositional. Adjectives agree with nouns in number, gender, and case. Adjectives generally follow nouns, though some precede or prefix nouns. Demonstrative adjectives have proximal, medial, and distal forms. The prepositional case is called the dative by convention. Verbs conjugate for three tenses, past, present, future, two aspects, simple, habitual, two numbers, singular, plural, four moods, indicative, subjunctive, conditional, imperative, relative forms, and in some verbs, independent and dependent forms. 
Verbs conjugate for three persons and an impersonal form in which no agent can be determined. There are two verbs for to be, one for inherent qualities, and one for transient qualities. The passive voice and many other forms are periphrastic. There are a number of preverbal particles marking the negative, interrogative, subjunctive, relative clauses, etc. There is a verbal noun, and verbal adjective. Verb forms are highly regular, many grammars recognize only 11 irregular verbs. Prepositions inflect for person and number. Different prepositions govern different cases. Some prepositions govern different cases depending on intended semantics. The word ag at becomes a gam at me in the first person singular. When used with the verb by to be, ag indicates possession. Irish shares this attribute with Russian. Ta libhar agam. I have a book. Literally, there is a book at on me. Cf. Russian. You mina s niga. Ta libhar agat. You have a book. Ta libhar aige. He has a book. Ta libhar aici. She has a book. Ta libhar again. We have a book. Ta libhar agabe. Ye have a book. Ta libhar acu. They have a book. Numerals have four forms abstract, impersonal, personal, and ordinal. Adu. Two. Da libhar. Two books. Beert. Two people. Dara. Second. Topic. Initial mutations In Irish, there are two classes of initial consonant mutations, which express grammatical relationship and meaning in verbs, nouns and adjectives. Linitian describes the change of stops into fricatives. Indicated in Gaelic script by a sibuilt a dot written above the consonant, it is shown in Latin script by adding a h. Kaith. Throw. Chaith may. I threw. Linitian is a past tense marker, caused by the particle do, now generally omitted. Ga. Requirement. Ispa and ga. Lack of the requirement. Linitian marking the genitive case of a masculine noun. Sean. John. A Sheehan. John. Linitian is part of the vocative case, the vocative linitian being triggered by a, the vocative marker before Sheehan. Eclipsis uru covers the voicing of voiceless stops, and nasalization of voiced stops. A hair. Father. R and a hair. Our father. Tus. Start. R ditus. At the start. Galeve. Galway. I n galeve. In Galway. Mutations are often the only way to distinguish grammatical forms. For example, the only non-contextual way to distinguish possessive pronouns. Her. His. And. Their is through initial mutations since all meanings are represented by the same word a. Their shoe, a mabrog eclipsis. His shoe, a brog lenition. Her shoe, a brog unchanged due to initial mutation, prefixes, clitics, suffixes, root inflection, ending morphology, elision, sandy, epinthesis, and assimilation, the beginning, core, and end of words can each change radically and even simultaneously depending on context. Topic. Orthography Modern Irish traditionally used the ISO-basic Latin alphabet without the letters J, K, Q, W, X, Y and Z, but with the addition of one diacritic sign, the acute accent a -I -O -U, known in Irish as the syned fada, long mark, plural, sinte fada. However, some Gaelicized words use those letters, for instance, jeep, is written as jip, the letter v has been naturalized into the language, although it is not part of the traditional alphabet, and has the same pronunciation as bh. In idiomatic English usage, this diacritic is frequently referred to simply as the fada, where the adjective is used as a noun. The fada serves to lengthen the sound of the vowels and in some cases also changes their quality. For example, in Munster Irish, carry, a is, a, or, and a is in father, but in Ulster Irish Donegal, a tends to be ash. Traditional orthography had an additional diacritic, a dot over some consonants to indicate lenition. In modern Irish, the letter h suffixed to a consonant indicates that the consonant is lenited. Thus, for example, Gaelic has become Gaelic. 
Around the time of the Second World War, Seamus Dalton, in charge of Ranig and Astriuchain, the official translations department of the Irish government, issued his own guidelines about how to standardise Irish spelling and grammar. This de facto standard was subsequently approved by the state and called the official standard or Kaidin Oifijual. It simplified and standardised the orthography. Many words had silent letters removed and vowel combination brought closer to the spoken language. Where multiple versions existed in different dialects for the same word, one or more were selected. Examples Gadhilg, Gadhilg, e, Gadhailain, Gwaelic, Gaelain, Gawadhilg, Jalain Gwaelga, Irish language. Lubby Lu, Louth, see County Louth historic names. Bia Bia, food. The standard spelling does not necessarily reflect the pronunciation used in particular dialects. For example, in Standard Irish, bia food, has the genitive bia. In Munster Irish, however, the genitive is pronounced bi. For this reason, the spelling bia is still used by the speakers of some dialects, in particular those that show a meaningful and audible difference between bia nominative case and b genitive case of food, foods. In Munster the latter spelling regularly produces the pronunciation, bi, because final idh, igh regularly delineates to ig in Munster pronunciation. Another example would be the word crua, meaning, hard. This pronounced, cru, in Munster, in line with the pre kiting spelling, crui. In Munster, au is pronounced, e, and aoi pronounced, i, but the new spellings of sagal, life, world, genitive, seal, have become saol, genitive saoil. This produces irregularities in the match-up between the spelling and pronunciation in Munster, because the word is pronounced, s-e-l, genitive, s-e-l, the dot above diacritic, called a punk symhith or c-buyilt often shortened to buyilt, derives from the punctum de lens used in medieval manuscripts to indicate deletion, similar to crossing out unwanted words in handwriting today. From this usage it was used to indicate the lenition of s from s to h, and f from f to zero in Old Irish texts. Lenition of C, P, and T was indicated by placing the letter H after the affected consonant, lenition of other sounds was left unmarked. Later both methods were extended to be indicators of lenition of any sound except L and N, and two competing systems were used, lenition could be marked by a built or by a postposed H. Eventually, use of the built predominated when texts were written using Gaelic letters, while the H predominated when writing using Roman letters. Today, Gaelic type and the built are rarely used except where a traditional style is required, e.g. the motto on the University College Dublin coat of arms or the symbol of the Irish Defence Forces, the Irish Defence Forces cap badge Oglag na H -aran. Letters with the built are available in Unicode and Latin 8 character sets see Latin extended additional chart. Topic. See also Topic. Bibliography Topic. References Topic. External links Language Links Database – Language Links and Resources for Irish Language Discover Irish Gwaelga are in Griasan Irish online resources Gael Taka Learning Irish? BBC. Social Network for Learners, Teachers and Speakers. Gales Coil Stats. Geotai and Top 40 Afajula na Haran Programs. Irish Swadesh List of Basic Vocabulary Words from Wiktionary's Swadesh List Appendix. Cartland na Gikonuinti Irish Dialect Archives. Irish Dialect Archive Card Collection. A UCD Digital Library Collection. Irish Dialect Archive Manuscript Collection. A UCD Digital Library Collection. Topic. Literature Extract from An Biobla Naofa, The Bible in Irish, published by An Sagart in 1981. Extract from the Tiomna Nua, New Testament, 1970, tr. Coslet O. Quinn, published by Cumann Gaelic na Higles Extract from An Biobla Naomtha The Holy Bible, 16th-17th century translation done under the supervision of William Bedell, republished in 1817 by the British and Foreign Bible Society 
Topic: Grammar and pronunciation. Learn Irish grammar with audio and pronunciation and Gale magazine – Irish Gaelic arts, culture, and history alive worldwide today A short Irish and Breton phrase list with Japanese translation renewal INCL sound file Brasikis Grammatic na Gwaelga ENGL. Translation Irish language in Mayo Di Ariner Mundart A phonological description of the dialect of the Aran Islands by F. N. Fink, from 1899. A dialect of Donegal A phonological description of the dialect of Glenties by E. C. Quiggan, from 1906. Trinity College Dublin The Irish Language Synthesizer. Cruinyog, Publishers of Irish Grammar Checker Software Annoys. Topic. Dictionaries Aseemhain. i.e., Dictionary and Terminology Resource General Gaelic Dictionaries Irish-English Audio – Image Dictionary <laughs>